Television in New Zealand. Television in New Zealand was introduced in 1960 as a state run service. The broadcasting sector was deregulated in 1989 when the government allowed competition to the state owned television New Zealand TVNZ. There are currently three forms of broadcast television a terrestrial DVBT service provided by Freeview, satellite services provided nationwide by both Freeview and Sky and an internet television service delivered over cable and fiber broadband provided by Vodafone. The first nationwide digital television service was launched in December 1998 by Sky, who had a monopoly on digital satellite television until the launch of Freeview's nationwide digital satellite service in May 2007. The Freeview Digital Terrestrial Service launched on 14 April 2008. A paid digital terrestrial service was launched in 2012 by Igloo and closed in 2017. This was a joint venture between Sky and TVNZ, provided Freeview UHF aerial channels along with 11 Sky channels. Broadband television currently operates from Vodafone. In July 2016, Sky announced that Igloo will be discontinued, although Freeview channels will still be available. The Vodafone service includes all Sky channels and Freeview channels. The digital changeover in New Zealand is now complete. It began on 30 September 2012, when Hawke's Bay and the West Coast, including parts of Tasman, switched off analog television transmission. The rest of the South Island switched off analog television transmission on 28 April 2013, followed by the Lower North Island on 29 September 2013. The Upper North Island, including the Waikato, Auckland, Bay of Plenty and Northland was the last region to cease analog transmissions on 1 December 2013. History Full-time television broadcasting was first introduced in New Zealand in 1960 and transmitted from the NZBC's existing one-year radio broadcasting facility at 74 Shortland Street in Auckland, now home to the University of Auckland's Gus Fisher Gallery. The annual television license fee was in ZPS for $8. Prime Minister Walter Nash had made a surprise announcement, a surprise both to the NZBS and to other members of the Labour government in London in November 1959, that New Zealand would have television within 12 months, the system was to be state-owned but to carry commercials, and would be introduced in stages in the four main centres. The first non-experimental programme was transmitted on Wednesday 1 June 1960. New Zealand, like Australia and most of Western Europe, adopted the 625-line standard for television. In contrast, United Kingdom used the 405-line standard exclusively until 1964. Initially, programming was done on a regional basis, with different services broadcasting from the main cities AKTV2 in Auckland being the first on 1 June 1960, followed in 1961 by CHTV3 in Christchurch on 1 June and WNT Vone in Wellington on 1 July, and then DNTV2 in Dunedin on 31 July 1962. Today, however, programming and scheduling is done in Auckland, where all the major networks are now headquartered. National won the 1960 election and the new Minister of Broadcasting, Arthur Kinsella, in the new national government rewrote the Broadcasting Act of 1936 and set up the state-owned New Zealand Broadcasting Corporation in ZBC in 1962 to control public radio and television, although the party had been polarized between having a state-owned private enterprise or mixed system. The first broadcast relay stations were commissioned in 1963, extending television coverage to Hamilton, Toranga and Palmerston North. Coverage was further expanded to Napier, Hastings and Invercargill in 1964, to Maru in 1965, 
and Wangari and New Plymouth in 1966. Advertising was introduced to Aucklanders on 4 April 1961 and facilitated increasing transmission hours to 28 per week. By 1962, there were 65,000 licenses. By 1963, there were 80,000 licenses and an estimated audience of 300,000 or one-eighth of the population, and by 1966, there were half a million licenses. Television sets were added to the CPI basket in 1966. At the time, a 23-inch black and white consulate television set cost on average P. Sone $131-262, equivalent to $5,000, $100 in December 2018 dollars. Initially, the hours of transmission were from 5 upon until close at about 10 upon, later extending in 1966 to 2 upon opening. A test pattern was transmitted from Ninim to allow for adjustment of TV sets in homes by technicians. The four stations were networked in 1969. The network was mostly complete in time for the Apollo 11 mission in July 1969, with gaps filled by strategically placed outside broadcasting vans to allow the film of the landing to be broadcast live across the country. The NZBC's first live network news bulletin was read by Double Stevenson on 3 November 1969. The Warkworth satellite station opened in 1971 providing the first real-time television link between New Zealand and the rest of the world. The NZBC had asked the government for the approval of a second TV channel as early as 1964. By 1971, however, two proposals for a second channel were under consideration, that of the NZBC for a non-commercial service and a separate commercial channel to be operated by an independent television corporation, headed by Gordon Dryden. Although the Broadcasting Authority had favored the independent television corporation bid, the incoming Labour government favored the NZBC's application and awarded it the license without any formal hearings beforehand. Eventually, independent television was awarded NZ $50,000 in compensation. On Wednesday, 31 October 1973, color television using the phase alternating line PAL system was introduced in readiness for the 1974 British Commonwealth Games, which were to be held in Christchurch in January and February 1974. The final switchover for color television was in December 1975. Reorganization the introduction of a second TV channel then called TV2 on Monday 30 June 1975 also saw the reorganization of broadcasting in New Zealand. The NZBC was dissolved in April of that year with the two television channels, Television 1 and TV2, run separately from one another. TV2 was renamed South Pacific Television in 1976. In 1978, the Broadcasting Corporation of New Zealand BCNZ was established, and in 1980, TV1 and South Pacific Known Once, again as TV2, were merged into a single organization, Television New Zealand TVNZ. Commercialization. In 1988, following major economic reforms to the state sector, the BCNZ was dissolved. TVNZ and Radio New Zealand RNZ became separate state-owned enterprises SOE which would have to compete commercially and return dividends to the Crown. Rather than continuing to be used to directly fund TVNZ and RNZ, the license fee, now called the broadcasting fee, was to be used for local content production and the state funding for non-commercial broadcasting in radio and television on a contestable basis. Part of wide-ranging reforms in the broadcasting sector, the Labour government of David Lange established the Broadcasting Commission, which became known as and finally called New Zealand on Air. Broadcasting in New Zealand was deregulated in 1989. 
Restrictions on television advertising were also revised in 1989, so that TVNZ channels could show advertisements anytime except Christmas Day, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, and between 6 a.m. and noon on Anzac Day. In that year, TV3, now known as 3, became the first privately owned TV station in the country, finally ending the state monopoly. Restrictions on foreign ownership were also removed, and TV3 was subsequently sold to Canada's Ken West. Sky TV, in which TVNZ originally had a small stake, began broadcasting New Zealand's first paid TV service on three UHF channels. The largest free-to-air commercial television channels are currently Discovery New Zealand's three, Bravo previously C4 and 4, Choice TV and HGTV, and Sky's Prime. Sky remains the dominant pay TV operator, now operating on satellite which wholesales content to Vodafone for their IPTV service. Although TVNZ had to compete with its commercial rivals through the 1990s, it maintained a dominant market position and paid a significant amount of its profits to the Crown in dividends. By 1998-1999, the National Party-led coalition was moving to privatize TVNZ and announced that the broadcasting fee would be discontinued. Since the 1970s, the license fee had been capped at zone $100 a year and was not allowed to increase with inflation. In real terms, this meant that public funding of broadcasting in New Zealand was greatly reduced by the time of the broadcasting fees abolition. However, the 1999 election saw a Labour-led coalition gain office. Over its next two terms, attempts were made to reintroduce public service functions to the sector. In 2003, TVNZ was restructured as a Crown-owned company, with a public service charter. The charter, abolished by the key national government in 2008, received a small amount of government subsidy, but TVNZ remains predominantly dependent on commercial revenue and is obliged to continue paying dividends to the Crown. It can apply to NZ on air funded directly from the government since 2004 support in local content initiatives such as drama and comedy, and funding of programming for minority groups such as gay, Christian, and rural New Zealanders. The funding of Maori programming has since passed to T. Mangai Paho, the Maori Broadcasting Commission. In 2004, the Maori Television Service was established to promote Maori language and culture. MTS is funded partly through direct government funding and partly through commercial advertising, but is eligible for contestable programming funds from T. Mangai Paho. In 2006, the government announced the introduction of two new non-commercial digital television services operated by TVNZ, offering drama, arts, documentary and children's programming called TVNZ 6 and TVNZ 7. However, after a change of government, funding for the two channels was not renewed. In 2011, the children's channel, TVNZ6, was replaced by the commercial youth channel TVNZU, leaving New Zealand with no free-to-air children's television. TVNZ Kids Zone 24 was subsequently established but was only available behind a Sky TV paywall before it ceased broadcasting in 2016. TVNZ7 ceased broadcasting on 30 June 2012, with a number of its programs being picked up by other channels. In response, Public Broadcasting Advocates announced plans to form a new lobby group. In 2020, Broadcasting Minister Chris Fafoy issued proposals to remerge TVNZ and RNZ into a unified public media organization amidst rapidly changing conditions in the media market. Freeview Freeview is a non-profit organization providing free-to-air digital television and digital radio to New Zealand. The Freeview service is available via satellite throughout New Zealand. Freeview's terrestrial service 
is a high-definition digital terrestrial television service available to 75% of the country's population using DVBS and DVBT standards on government-provided spectrum. Analog switch-off in New Zealand was completed on 1 December 2013. A major benefit of digital television is the ability to overcome the poor reception caused by New Zealand's rugged topography. Digital TV offers more channels, better pictures, and sound quality and new services such as on-screen program guides. It was estimated that on 31 December 2008, 198,938 Freeview certified set-top boxes and ITVs had been sold since the platform's launch 146,416 satellite, 52,522 UHF. It is estimated that Freeview is in 12.6% of New Zealand homes, roughly 420,000 people. This makes it New Zealand's third-largest television platform and New Zealand's second-largest digital platform. Freeview certified set-top boxes and PVR are available at most major New Zealand retailers. Cheaper, uncertified equipment can also be used. Regional Channels New Zealand's deregulated broadcasting environment has led to many regional stations either non-commercial public service or privately owned, broadcast only in one region or city. These stations mainly broadcast free-to-air on UHF frequencies, although some are carried on subscription TV. Content ranges from local news, access broadcasts, satellite source news, tourist information and Christian programming to music videos. Over a dozen regional television stations in New Zealand are grouped by the Regional Broadcasters Association. Free-to-air satellite channels. Many digital channels are broadcast into New Zealand via satellite. These include Freeview, Sky, and many Australian and other channels. Most can be received using a standard blind scan capable set top box in addition to the standard 60 cm satellite dish that is fitted to many houses. Pay television channels. New Zealand has a number of television channels that are or have been only available on pay television networks. Sky, in 1990, Sky Network Television then, and again now, unrelated to its UK namesake, launched three pay TV channels offering movies, sport and news on UHF. These over time expanded to five. In 1998, it launched a multi-channel digital satellite TV service. Vodafone, currently operates a broadband TV service delivered over cable and fiber broadband. Customers receive Freeview channels via a digital TV recorder and can subscribe to Sky channels. Streaming In 2014, streaming television entered the New Zealand market. About one quarter of the population now use streaming as a form of television. Service providers include Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, Plus, Neon, Netflix, Sky Sport Now, Spark Sport. QuickFlix free providers include 3Now, TVNZ On Demand.